Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, June 20th, 2024, and last night, Fox News released their brand new national poll that shows Joe Biden in the lead for the first time since October of 2023. Over half a year later, President Biden reclaims his advantage over President Trump in a Fox News poll. An announcement that came as a surprise to many people that were looking at the trend line of the Fox News poll that shows that President Biden is now in the strongest position than at any point over the past three years in a bid for re-election against President Trump. You can see on the tracker here from Fox News that the trend line here for President Biden has been quite significant over the past couple of months. In March of 2024, Donald Trump led Joe Biden by five points nationwide. Just two months later, in May, Donald Trump had a one-point advantage, a four-point increase for President Biden, but still ultimately a decrease in support uh, and negative overall in terms of the net. And then now in June, in a continuation of this trend, President Biden has a two-point lead now at the majority mark at 50%, nearing an overall majority of Americans nationwide in the favorite against Donald Trump. Now, this comes at a time that we have seen many different news articles talking about how independents are the specific base here that has moved away from President Trump following the conviction, what Politico dubs to be the real fallout from the Trump conviction, and it has entirely everything to do with those in the center. It has nothing to do with those on the right or the left voters that were already going to vote for or against Biden or Trump, regardless of what happened with this conviction but largely around independents, independents that have now swung this brand new poll from Fox News in favor of the Democratic Party. Now, I think this is particularly significant because it came at a time where Fox News really, in many ways, does not want President Biden to win re-election. Their primetime hosts don't even mention this brand new poll's poll from their own specific news network. And the right wing has been very quick to try to squash this poll as something that was politically irrelevant. But there is very clearly a trend line here that in the recent polls, President Biden has started to build back momentum. And Fox News of all polls, which just three months ago had Biden down by five, now has him up by two. That is a seven point swing in, you know, a quarter of a year. You are talking about a very specific time frame from March to now in which Biden has swung the entire electorate by seven percentage points, which is largely in line with what we are seeing in some of these new battleground state polls. What I found to be uh, interesting in Minnesota was that the race actually narrowed up back in May. And we talked about it briefly, but I always said, I believe Joe Biden will ultimately win Minnesota by at least a likely margin. Well, here's where it was back in May. Joe Biden had a lead over Donald Trump by just two percentage points. It was eerily reminiscent of the 2016 presidential election when Hillary Clinton defeated Donald Trump by just 1.5%. But a month later, despite their initial headline saying that the hush money trial left no impact on the presidential race, just one month later, you found that now Joe Biden has a six point advantage over Donald Trump, a four point swing in under a month. Now, the headline here mentions Amy Klobuchar, and I think there also seems to be a media problem surrounding Joe Biden and where we build these narratives that 2024 is just going to be a Republican wave year. When you look at the Fox News poll here, we find that the primetime hosts don't even acknowledge it. They don't put it out there. They don't publicize it. And thus, the viewers of Fox News don't realize that in the past three months, Biden has clawed his way back to victory. Minnesota. You see here that the headline of the poll in May that showed Biden in the advantage had nothing to do with the lead for either candidate, had nothing to do with Amy Klobuchar, but had everything to do with the hush money trial, trial leaning no impact on the presidential race. Clearly, that was wrong, because when you take a look at the specific numbers here, President Biden has the advantage here in Minnesota by six points, just one point off where he was back in 2020. And I point that out to tell you, that the 2020 election, we are starting to see many states revert back to their priors of the 2020 race. And if that happens, Biden wins re-election. New Hampshire now has an average of Biden being up by five to six points. He won the state by seven in 2020. In Minnesota, Biden is up by six. He won it by tw seven in 2020. In New Mexico, Biden is up by eight. He won that state by 11 in 2020. Three points off, but not these 10-point swings that we are being told is happening in these battleground states, not these 7.8-point swings on the national average that we are being told is happening. 
Sure, Donald Trump is doing better than he really ever has when it comes down to polls here. But trend lines tell us one thing, and while the polls may say, sure, Donald Trump has a strong showing, my own electoral map has him in a much better position than he has really ever been in 2016 or 2020 based on predictions, it makes sense that Donald Trump is in a strong state in states like Georgia, in states like North Carolina, in states like Ohio, arguably even in states like Nevada and Wisconsin. But when we start to see this data here, it simply cannot be ignored. And the Trump team, too, is very quick to say that this Fox News poll is trash. It combats this narrative and this idea that Donald Trump and his party has been trying to make to be that Republicans have just been landsliding this election and they will have a strong electoral mandate come January 2025 for potentially Project 2025. The Trump team has been under this assumption, this very large uh, you know, guiding principle that this election is in the bag. You see it in the way that Trump campaigns. You see it with Chris LaSavita, the Trump campaign manager. You see it with the members of his you know, national spokes team, whatever it might be. This overconfidence here feels very similar to what we saw from the Clinton campaign in 2016. And that is probable, you know, a problem for Donald Trump. You look at this and say, you're losing to Fox News. It's trash. And it's the same thing he did in 2020, don't get me wrong. But that type of strategy, that type of throwing out and rejecting things, and sure, I think there are reasons to reject certain polls. And I think Fox News in the cross tabs here has a little bit, you know, iffy numbers here that do end up counteracting each other that lead to an overall Biden victory. But I think when you get to this just nationalistic standpoint where everything is about Trump wins, Trump wins, Trump wins, Trump wins. And then the moment that there's a Biden poll in the advantage, it's all of a sudden thrown out when it has been a consistent trend line. I mean, he did throw out the poll that showed him winning in June where he was or, or in May when he was up by a point. He didn't throw out the poll in March when it showed him up by five points. The trend lines there were better for Donald Trump. He was up two points nationally. Now he's up by half a point. That's a shift. And the reason I care about that and we've talked about this for a while now, is that these consistent trends amongst independent voters in specific is what wins Biden this election. It's not about, I mean, it is very much largely about the basis, but independent voters could make up that very narrow amount that has mattered consistently. I think a big driving factor for why for months on end, you can look back at my videos. I had Trump in the advantage in Wisconsin, in Michigan, in Pennsylvania, in Arizona, in every battleground state. At one point in time, I even floated the possibility that Donald Trump wins the election with over 300 electoral votes. And that's because that's what it made sense at the time. But as we have gotten closer to this election, we have seen a reversion in support. At one point in time, Trump was up five points in Michigan. Today, he's up by two. When you look at states like Wisconsin, at one point in time, Trump was up by a large amount. Now he's up by 0.1. What we find in these battleground states is that we have seen a narrowing, no matter how you cut it. And sometimes the polls really do not make a lot of sense. But I think these national ones are far, far more uh, better at indicating overall trend lines than actual margin, if that makes sense. That the same group of the electorate that could be choosing Trump by five, three months ago could very well be choosing Biden by two today. And it even is more you know, impressive to the Biden campaign that you have this poll from Fox News, which has a strong track record, might I add, when it comes down to opinion polls, but also, too, that it is Fox News. It is the Fox News network. This is a conservative news network, and not to say they're trying to skew the poll. But I think it speaks to more of like a poetic justice point that President Biden is leading, and this is the first mainstream poll we have seen uh, recently, too. Not many have actually released a lot of their numbers, so I'm interested to see what many of them are. But Morning Consult now has Biden back in the lead. Ipsos as well. You have Fox News now. And so it's a question of will there be more polls that show Biden in the advantage point? Will there be more polls in battleground states that do it? And the answer is probably. These you know trends over the past three weeks since the conviction has shown that independent voters have absolutely swayed. And so that's the portion of the country that Trump really needs to tap into, because it's all about the margins here. Even the Fox News poll finds that very few percentages of people were actually swayed by the Trump conviction. But primarily amongst independents was that very few block, you know, pushed into. Besides those that were voting for Trump more because he was convicted, or, you know, uh, had no change for Biden because Trump was convicted. A lot of those people were already going to vote one way or the other, right? Either going to vote for Biden, going to vote for Trump. But that small, small percentage that might seem largely inconsequential when you have three, four, five percent of the country that says, I changed my mind because of this conviction. Even if it was down to one or two percent, look at Wisconsin in 2020. Had one percent of the state gone the other way, Trump would have won. Biden's numbers reduced down to 296. 
We'll take a look at Georgia. 16 electoral votes here. Donald Trump, had he done 1% better, take away those 16 electoral votes, down to 280. Take a look at Arizona. Had Donald Trump done one point better, take down 11 electoral votes. Biden's at 269. Trump is at 269. Republican House, when it comes down to that way that votes, doesn't need to be the majority. It's an interesting, more convoluted pathway. Don't think it should be really dove into right now. But point being, Trump would have won the election. 1% would have made all the difference. 1% would have made all the difference. You want to know where else? 1% would have made all the difference? The 2016 presidential election. Had Wisconsin been one point to the left, we could take a look. You would have found that Hillary Clinton would have won the election. Wisconsin to Clinton. Michigan, 0.2%, 1% the other way, Clinton. Pennsylvania, 0.7%, 1% the other way, Clinton. You know what this would have totaled if she had just won here, lost North Carolina, lost Georgia, lost Florida, lost Arizona, lost Iowa, lost Ohio. Hell, even lost New Hampshire. Even throw that on there, lose Maine. You know what happens, though? Throwing that together, take away New Hampshire, take away Maine, 272. 272 electoral votes. So, to put it into context about how much all of this matters, and the narrowest of margins matter, and the swayable 1, 2, 3% of the electorate, oh yeah, it makes a difference. And it is the exact reason why President Biden stands to be at a strong point. The Newsweek article headlines this as Joe Biden getting the breakthrough with voters that he was praying for. And that's true. Fox News shows that the economy is perceived as at the be best point, a record high, during Biden's presidency. You take a look at immigration. Biden is performing best amongst this electorate. And while sure, I absolutely acknowledge that this doesn't speak for every poll, and it isn't necessarily going to be this one poll that is always accurate and nothing else is ever accurate. I mean, that is not the case. But it is certainly something to consider. And there has been a consistent thing where people just don't cover a lot of the polls where Biden is in the lead because it doesn't fit this consistent narrative that has been brewed over the past six months that Trump is going to demolish Biden this election. Seven days from now, we will be watching the presidential debate. Seven days and four hours, five hours. Atlanta, Georgia, CNN is hosting the first presidential debate, first of two presidential debates this election cycle. That could really shake things up. If Biden is able to perform well at the debate, and this conviction thing holds, because it's going to hold, but the question is, does it hold amongst voters? You are talking about the brewing of a perfect storm for Biden to win re-election. It doesn't just extend here. When you take a look to what's at stake in these states, Montana, lackluster GOP candidate, but that only matters for a Senate race. That's where it really is individualized. But where we could see a Senate race, like Montana, impact Biden positively is a state like Pennsylvania, where Dave McCormick is the presumptive Republican nominee for Senate there. The front runner, easily going to win. He might have already won. I have not been closely watching the primaries in Pennsylvania. Point being, though, that Dave McCormick, as the eventual Republican nominee, he's from Connecticut. He's super wealthy. He is Dr. Oz reincarnate. And he also just really does not have the same type of electability that Pat Toomey did, the campaign style of Donald Trump. And Bob Casey Jr. is super popular. I mean, you are talking super popular across the state. If he wins, the Democrat for Senate wins by eight points, Biden's probably winning. The amount of crossover support we see is not large enough to make something like that a reality, unless we're talking Maine from 2020. And even then, that's a unique instance where, you know, you had a Republican win by 35 in 2014, then by eight in 2020, and probably speaking five points if you went through the ranked choice rounds. And, you know, and story here, though, that that took a whole lot and still a victory was not as strong or as impressive as it was in the last election. If Pennsylvania goes blue on the Senate level, on the House level, on the state legislature level, we will probably see Biden win that state as well. Michigan has a Senate race that is competitive. Arizona has a Senate race where Carrie Lake is expected, the Republican, expected to lose by six, seven points. Arizona could carry Biden over the finish line, especially with the abortion referendum on the ballot. Same thing in Nevada. There is going to be a question in two weeks from now, post-debate, more than a month out from the conviction, what is the impact of all of these different metrics on the election? What is the impact of, our, of all these different uh, events and circumstances? Trump now being a criminal. Uh, you know, Biden potentially beating him at the debate. Trump potentially beating him at the debate, depending on what the public perceives it. What does this mean for the election? What we find with Fox News, what we find with some of these statewide polls like the ones in Minnesota, is that largely this media is moving in silence on this improvement for President Biden. But we see it, and it's clear. President Biden is at the best performing stance that he has been 
in the entire election right now. Best performing in over a year, the lead for the first time since October of 2023, and even then in October, it was narrower than it is today. The Biden campaign should never take this as a sign of complacency or that they are set to win the election. But the Trump team should start to wake up that this race is not one that's going to be a cakewalk for the former president. And that type of thinking is exactly what lost Hillary Clinton the 2016 presidential election. And for their sake, they may be very well replicating what she did wrong in that race and eventually could lose the presidency. We will see what happens between now and November, between now and the election debate and after the election debate because I'm interested to see how that actually shapes up what we're seeing nationally. Overall, though, President Biden does have that advantage over President Trump. And so this two-point lead here, well, may not be the seven points that he was up by on Election Day. It's still something, and certainly far better than being down five points, which was the number in March. A seven-point swing over the past three months. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 presidential election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.